House Republicans did not get a lot of answers out of that hearing. What can we expect to learn next week? Joining me right now is the congressman leading the hearing, House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer. Mr. Chairman, thanks very much for being with us this weekend. My pleasure. So much to discuss. Where are you in the investigation of influence peddling for the Biden family? I want to get your take on what we're going to hear next week from the whistleblowers. But what can you tell us now about your investigation? What have you learned? Well, we've learned, obviously, uh, there have been more bank transactions. Uh, this family's been receiving money from all over the planet. I think everyone knows that, that watches Fox News, but unfortunately, people that get their news from other outlets aren't as educated on it. So Wednesday, we're bringing the whistleblowers in. Uh, these are very credible career IRS employees who have never blown the whistle on anything. Uh, one is a very partisan uh, registered Democrat, so we're excited that uh, it's going to be a, a bipartisan uh, panel. We're going to be able to ask them very specific, substantive questions about crimes that have been committed by various members of the Biden family. Uh, there's a lot of talk back and forth about, well, they should have been charged with money laundering, or they should have been charged with wire fraud, or they should have been an unregistered foreign agent. What level of tax evasion did they really have? We're going to be able to dive into that in a public setting where every American is going to have the opportunity to watch this hearing live. And I think that the American people are going to be very satisfied with the answers that we get. And I'm excited, Maria, because we found all these shell companies that make absolutely no sense. I don't believe they've paid a penny of revenue, a penny of taxes on, on most of this millions of dollars that they've received from, from our adversaries around wow. the world. But then the, the question is, what did they do to receive this money? How did they list that on their taxes? As a, as a service they provided, uh, as a capital investment? We don't know. So if you're into finance, like most of your viewers are, uh, this should be a good substantive committee hearing that will allow us to move forward in the deposition process when we bring these individuals that were helping the Bidens funnel and, and launder this money, we'll be able to ask them specific questions about specific transactions. Have you been able to identify specific policy decisions that Joe Biden made uh, as a reason to get paid? For example, he came into the White House at the beginning of his term and he canceled the China initiative, which was an initiative to, to indict people who were sending uh, information to the CCP while they surveilled us and spied on us. Was he paid for that decision? Yeah, yeah I mean, you look, look who... President Biden had go in and advocate for that was the then president of the University of Pennsylvania, who he's now made an ambassador to Germany. But remember, what we've learned is University of Pennsylvania was the recipient of tens of millions of dollars of anonymous donations from China. So who better to go and advocate to uh, abandon the China initiative, which was an FBI investigation into a China, into the massive Chinese spy ring that China has at our colleges and universities that conduct research, where American taxpayers subsidize this research and development, and Chinese students steal that technology, steal that information, and send it back to China. Every American should want that stop, but Joe Biden ended that. Uh, ended the FBI's investigation into that with someone who's received tens of millions of dollars from China, just like Joe Biden. That is a bad decision for the American people. That puts China first and America last. Then you look at what all happened with Burisma, with firing the prosecutor. That We've talked about that in the past, but I think you're going to see more and more evidence come forward that Joe Biden was had a lot more knowledge about Burisma than what he's ever claimed. So, I think that uh, we're now at the phase of the investigation where we've accumulated enough bank records to where we can uh, ask these IRS employees specific substantive questions and now bring the people in for depositions and say, what triggered this wire transfer from China? What triggered this wire transfer from Romania? And what did, why did you launder it through all these shell companies? Why didn't they just send it directly to the Bidens? We're going to be able to answer those questions publicly to where every American can see it. Yeah, that's really compelling. Um, and it's just incredible the amount of money that we're talking about and the number of countries. I saw what you reported in terms of Romania this week as well. Right. Yeah, Romania. What's so obvious about what happened in Romania, Joe Biden just flew down there 
and was talking about foreign policy and foreign aid. And as soon as he left, while he was vice president, Maria, and this is very important, while he was vice president and in charge of foreign policy for Romania, his family started receiving payments from a Romanian foreign national, a corrupt Romanian foreign national. It makes no sense. The payments, the way they were sent, were intended to be laundered through shell companies while he was vice president. So they've never explained what that family did to, to receive over a million dollars from Romania. And then you throw yeah. in Ukraine, you throw in Russia, you throw in China. And then we haven't even gotten to the Middle East and Africa yet. But this family has influenced, peddled, and put uh, the Bidens first and America last. Another big story this week, the Secret Service closed their probe into the cocaine that was found at the White House after 11 days. They said that they don't have enough evidence to find a person of interest. I sat down with former President Trump this week in an exclusive interview, uh, which is airing this Sunday on Sunday Morning Futures. Here's a part of his reaction when I asked him about that probe. Watch. They come after me on boxes and they can't find drugs. You know how many cameras they have opposite the front door of the Situation Room? They know who this was. They know the person. I don't think it's possible for bags of cocaine to be left in a certain area by the Situation Room. I'm not talking about, you know, five blocks away. The Situation Room, where you decide on war, where you decide on nuclear. Pretty extraordinary, Congressman. Now we know that there were two other incidents where illicit drugs were found at the White House last year. Your reaction to this? I know you want an investigation of this. Yeah, well, I, I do, Maria, but unfortunately, I'd say the evidence is already gone. Uh, they supposedly sent a bag of cocaine to a lab in the FBI, and guess what? They couldn't find a trace of DNA or any fingerprints or anything like that. I guess someone came in with uh, b very thick uh, leather gloves in the heat of summer and, and laid it down there. But look, you know, this is one of two things happened here. Either the, the Secret Service is being dishonest with the American people, and this is another example of another cover-up for another Biden, or they're incompetent. And if they're incompetent, then that's very concerning to every American because the White House is supposed to be the most secure and the safest location in America. I mean, this houses our leadership for our great country. And you're telling me that somehow somebody can sneak in there and lay a white powdery substance uh, in a main section of the White House and no one have any idea who did that? They don't have any suspects or anything else? So, again, it's one of two things. Either it's another cover-up or this is another example of incompetence by a, a government agency. Congressman, we're going to be keeping a spotlight on it. Thanks very much for your work, and it's good to see you this weekend. Thanks for having me, Maria.